Well, I've got the thread in the bottom of these, but there's one other thing which I think we'll do on here. It's a bit of a long travel, but uh, I've got to find some way of securing the shaft in here, and I would ideally cut a keyway. But as a lazy option, I'm going to use a long set screw and have a decent flat on the bar inside there. So we just got a lot of drilling to do. Next bit of fun will be threading it. <coughs> we'll try that slowly, very slowly. Now oh, back at the lathe. I've got this piece of 22 mil, which is, I was looking for a piece of three quarter, but this was convenient. And uh, I want to turn down a half inch shaft and then at the end we've got to keep it about full size and bore it out. I'll explain what it's about when we get to it. I tried to set this up in the three jaw but it was ridiculous. Every time I tried in any position I had about uh, oh my gosh 12 thou run out. This, may, this piece may not be dead straight of course but I don't know whether you can see the indicator. It's about two graduations. That's my metric, so that's less than a thou. And that's adequate for what we want. So we've got to face that end, center drill, and get us put a live center in the end. And then turn down to a half inch for part of it. Well I won't bother you with <clears throat> much of this. I've just taken a few cuts. I'm actually using this uh, rather pointy little insert because of getting in close enough to the live centre and fairly slow feed, not a huge cut. Just can't do it with this. Not at this cutting angle anyway. I'll just take one pass here whilst we're videoing. Crazy stringy chips, look at it. There's certainly no chip breaker on this uh, <laughs> insert, but uh, it's not doing too bad. Um, when I get down towards the half inch, I will probably take it easy and do some polishing to get a fit into the that boss that I've made. All right, so I'm going to carry on with that. Come back to you later. Oh, these stringy chips, look at them. It's partly my angle, angle of attack on this tool, I think, because I'm trying to make sure I can get in close to the uh, center. I'm getting close to the end here. I'll just give you a cut before I do my critical finishing. <laughs> Well, that was only a five thou cut, so uh, the chips were breaking off, but uh, heavier cuts, my golly, it was ridiculous. 
<coughs> All right, I'm going to finish that. Got to concentrate here. Well, I had to do some paperwork on that. Probably two or three tenths, something of that sort. And I just just finished that shoulder. Just check that for fit. And that just snugs there, which is nice. Just that last bit probably missed a, a tenth or so right down in this end against the shoulder. So that's good. Now we'll have to. Uh, turn this round and work on this end. The only other thing I want to do on this, and I don't know how it's going to work out actually, I want to put three flats on. Another thing that may become clear as mud later. <laughs> yeah, well guys, I'm having problems with the lathe now. Motor's running alright, but there's something in not quite right with my variable pulley. It's not running, it's not uh, taking up adjustment when I use my speed lever. Uh, I've got to a certain point on this piece here. I managed to get a, oh I don't know, what size was it? 1332 drill down there just to get some depth I was going to go with half inch and then enlarge, but I'll have just to run this at a fixed speed. I'm going to use a tiny boring bar, which you won't really see much of. I want to open that up to uh, 575, I think, just over. So I'll come back to you when I get that done, hopefully. Well, I was going to show a cut there, but I got carried away. I'm really uh, a bit concerned about the lathe drive motor and pulley and stuff this is made big enough to get this uh, acorn nut in sorry that's uh, on one of the mill handles that's all I wanted was to get the ability to get over the nut it may all become clearer later possibly <laughs> so we've got a few more steps to go which I think will be in the milling machine and then I'm going to have to take this thing partly into pieces because and my access is terrible I can't walk behind it it's uh, very awkward so there'll be a lot of dismantling ah uh, well I put the three jaw back on I've actually still got two little uh, pins to make with a thread on the end I think I can manage that, but there's a bit of vibration. And I did have a catch earlier. I had a catch. You can see there's a mark. There's a little mark on here. I was actually trying something a bit naughty. I was trying to do a plunge with a milling cutter to go straight down to a flat bottom. And there was enough lack of rigidity in the... Uh, chuck and it moved to the side and caught that's the only evidence of it there now but I suspect that something got a bit stressed not very good so I'm going to have to investigate once I finish the pins anyway this is this is where we're at at the moment all right and again seeing as I haven't really described what I'm trying to do. Uh, you'll hopefully see what happens later, if it even works. So two little pins to make when I get to it. Uh, it'll probably be tomorrow now. All right, that's where we got to. Well, I'm keeping the lathe going sufficient to 
make these two pins. It's a long piece, double ended, and I'm just doing this second one, which I do by hand to uh, just give a bit of thread relief. You've seen me do this before, I just do it by hand. This is mainly to ensure that the pin bottoms out correctly when it goes into the thread. Doesn't need a whole lot here. Just enough. And then we'll use the uh, Then we'll use the die get the thread on it again turn the spindle by hand Oh, that was good. <laughs> to just try again. We'll just get the uh, thread on this one. As I said, the other end's done. Spin handling spindle as usual. And we should be far enough on there. Right, all I've got to do now is to take this pin out and cut it off and put a chamfer on each end. And that's about as much I want to do on the lathe until I can give it some attention. It's a motor and pulley problem somehow or other. I'm just going to face these pins off and put a chamfer on. took a bit longer because I had a fair bit of spare to get rid of. I was working towards a carriage stop, wasn't quite, wasn't quite sure when it would finish. I just put a chamfer on here. I think that should do. I just got to do the other one. I'll show you what I'm going to do with these soon. Now I'll try and get you up to speed on where we are. Because apart from any intro on this video, you won't as yet know quite the, what I'm doing. But uh, in terms of piece by piece, here's the central shaft that we've made. Uh, which is to go into this block and I want a flat you might be able to see actually on here it's sticking out at the moment you see there's a set screw there and I want a flat for that to bear on so I'm just putting a 3 8 flat on here and the reason for the rotary table is it's the only way that I can come up with to put three flats on this area, all right? And you'll see why at some point. <laughs> so I'm going to get that done and then uh, try and get these three done. I've got a bunch of feeler gauges 
under here because it's over the vise and the slight gap is nicely filled with the feeler gauges. Let's zoom in a bit. This is a rather screwed up end mill, this 3 8 It's got a chip off one corner. I'm hoping it'll be enough just to get the flat that I want. Taking it a bit slow because, uh, as I say, the cutter is a bit less than good. We'll take another cut on there and then we'll do something down this end. Well, I've taken a fairly generous uh, 50 thou cut on there. I think that's okay. I want it to be fairly significant as a flat because it's got to stop rotation. I said earlier, I think a keyway would really be better but I'm hoping this will suffice. Uh, this is another worn cutter, it's the only inch I've got. Desperately needs reground. Uh, so I'll have to make do with it and uh, I have to take <coughs> very small cuts. Uh, I took that down to 50 thou but here I think uh, 20 thou on each facet should do. Hopefully it will. Alright, we'll try that. Um, I won't keep the video running because it's going to be slow. Probably bore the hell out of you. Well, I'm chancing my arm a bit here really because this cutter is not good. I uh, stopped that at 15 thou, taking small cuts. The only way to do it with an old cutter. And also the stick out here is a bit excessive. You can imagine there it's uh, quite away from the mounting point. But I haven't got any choice really. I'd like to have used a hex collet block. But uh, because of the shape of this it wasn't really going to work. I'll tell you what guys, that cutter was doing more punishing of the metal than cutting. <laughs> I probably should have used a smaller cutter and two passes. Anyway, it's not hypercritical, but I'm, I'm going to deburr this, clean it up a bit, and then I'll show you what we're all intending to do. There's probably going to be a lot of reflection on here if I get the angle wrong. I got one pin in here and we'll get the other one in. I was going to put some flats on these but I don't think it'll be necessary. I can always use a bit of thread lock if I need to. And then this piece it looks like I haven't deburred I haven't deburred my flats enough yet. I'll come back in a minute. God, I'm going to have to get some more milling cutters. That uh, one inch cutter should be renamed a milling displacer. A metal displacer. That's about what it was. God, what a mess. Anyway, put that piece in. And I just, sorry, I'm just going off camera just to get this lined up. I've got a centre, I've got a centre pop on here, if I can see it. That's for the, uh, that's for the um, flat. Zoom back a bit more there maybe see a little bit more. I put a 10 to, 1024 in here, I could possibly have had a six, uh, quarter 20. I think it'll be alright. Now then, got to put this where it's going to go. 
Well guys, here's the end result of this madness. Uh, the three flats we did was for the chuck here. Uh, the chuck itself doesn't run quite true. <laughs> I mean this is a Harbour Freight $28 drill and the chuck is not very good. This was all perfectly centered but the slight chuck run out gives a bit of a wiggle. It's rather annoying but in principle what we've got is we go on over the uh, acorn nut Uh, this also works on the X, I'll show you. Again we've got this slight wiggle because of the uh, chuck. I guess you can't expect a lot from an inexpensive drill. Not sure what I can do anything to improve that except get a better drill. If I just hand hold a minute, you can see what we were trying to achieve there with the uh, center part that goes over the acorn nut and then the two pins. I mean, that's sitting there happily. Uh, it's just when we rotate, we get the wiggle. Anyway, the point is, it, it does work. So, uh, wrapping up, there it is, <laughs> a lot of work for a little gadget. If the drill was better quality, I think the chuck would be better. I suppose I was expecting a lot to have it running absolutely absolutely perfect from, from the get-go. Uh, but it's functional and uh, it's just to those times when I want to move a long distance. Uh, now I've got to get the lathe sorted out and that's... Uh, I don't know, it could be a whole days messing around, which I may manage soon, I hope. So beyond that, I don't know what's coming. But <laughs> I had to split this into two parts because there were so many stages, it just grew and grew. Anyway, if, uh, if you reach the end here, welcome. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys soon, I hope. Thanks for watching. <laughs>